guest speakers and to all our students as well as the lecturer that finding mm. time and joining today to our career talk series one. Hey, I'm Akita Chamberlai and I will be the moderator for today's event. Okay, so a bit of housekeeping before we begin. Okay, we will have a total of two talks from two speakers today and followed by a Q&A session after that. So students, you may prepare your questions and ask during the Q&A sections. And we will also issue the attendance confirmation during the Q&A section too. So please fill up the uh, attendance confirmation and all participants will receive an e for attending to the events, okay? So now we can begin. So today we are honored enough to have architect Naslan bin Baharuddin and architect Atranda bin Asis with us. Um, they are going to share with us their valuable experience practicing as an architect, and which I think it will be very, very useful for our students. And personally, I, I think this is um, a good the golden, golden opportunities or sort of like eye openers for all the students. OK, so to begin today's career talk num series number one, I would like to invite our director, um, Dr. Ali Saprina Bindi Ismail, for her welcoming remarks. Let us welcome Dr. Alice. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Madam Moderator, Architect Chan Walai. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, welcome. Selamat datang. Uh, especially to the honourable guest, uh, Architect Nazlan Baharudin, the Principal Architect from Reka Bina Architect, and Architect Adrianta Abdul Aziz, the Principal Architect from Arad Architect. And uh, to all my dear participants for today's event, uh, not only from Malaysia, but also we be having a uh, participant also from India and Indonesia joining in. Uh, thank you for attending today's event organized by the UTM Architecture School. So today's webinar talk is actually the first ever that held uh, being by the UTM Architecture School. So as the director of the UTM Architecture, I feel very honored to have these two wonderful, prominent and successful speakers that had been contributing to the Malaysian built environment landscape and had been actively involved in uh, propagating and promoting the architecture education in Malaysia to produce architects as leaders of the nation. So today's webinar actually is an eye opener to all, uh, especially in Malaysia, because we have a lot of loopholes within the Malaysian architecture education from the aspects of the quality and the quantity of the architect graduates that need a lot of participation from many parties and stakeholders to improve the situation. So may today intellectual discourse be as a starting point between UTM Architecture School and the industry players that is um, Arad Architect Firm and Rekabin Architect Firm to have many future collaborations ahead in strengthening and to achieve the UTM Architecture School vision to fulfill the aim for star agenda and to be top 50 in the world. So this collaboration uh, with architect Nazlan and also with architect Adrianta is actually an essential milestone to realize the quadruple helix model or known as Gucci collaboration, government, university, community, industry uh, collaboration. And therefore, I hope that this talk and webinar series not only become the first, but there'll be a lot of many more to come in the future. So once again, I congratulate everyone on making this event a success and I wish everyone the best for today. And here is to looking forward for our collaborations between UTM Architecture School with Arad Architect Firm and also Rekabina Architect Firm. So thank you all and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Architect Nazlan and Architect Adrianta. Again, thank you. Okay, I pass the platform to you, Architect Chan Wailai. Thank you for the welcoming message. Okay, so our, we will start our first talk. So before we begin, let me introduce Architect Nazlan. So our first speaker is Architect Nazlan bin Baharuddin with the title of the Professional Architect Sustaining Ethical Values. Very good topic. Okay, Architect Aslan graduated from University of Nottingham and started practicing in the field of architecture since 1982. He is now the managing director at Architect Record Pinner Syndrome Bahad, which he has completed various types of project range from campus designs to corporate park and up until master planning. Okay, and he has won many awards and the latest would be the PAM Gold Award for Design Excellence, which was given to UM Business School 
Bangunan Asman Hasmin at KL, as well as Pan Steel Award for the Student Center at KKTM Balik Pulau. Beside all of this, he is actively involving himself in the architecture education, um, be it for the architecture school or to the professionals. Okay, one of his recent involvement is because that he was our external examiner for our school program, which just completed in September. We were glad to have him with us and we received a lot of valuable input for him from him. So without any delay, I would like to invite architect Naslan. Okay, the floor is your okay. I th I think uh, you might need to un unmute architect Naslan. Yes. My goodness. <laughs> I didn't realize <laughs> that uh, it was muted, you know. Uh, you must have been on auto mode. Anyway, thank you very much, um, um, uh, Architect Chan, Prof. Alice, for a very kind introduction. Uh, I hope to do justice, you know, to this topic that, uh, that I'm, I'm about to talk uh, about. Uh, but first of all, let me congratulate uh, UTM, the School of Architecture UTM. Uh, it's been my uh, honored privilege to be uh, external examiner for the second time and uh, for those uh, who have not uh, sort of attended the uh, or had the chance to, 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 to witness the external examination uh, I'd just like to reiterate the, the impression that uh, the, the school had left me and my co-external uh, exa examiner uh, Prof um, uh, Salama I think I believe his name was uh, from Strathclyde in Glasgow, uh, we were just very impressed with the cost structure that you guys have, you know, prepared. Uh, as I was ten years ago, um, things have changed, uh, obviously, and and I'm pleased to say for the better. Uh, the School of Architecture for UTM has done, you know, a lot of a lot of work to improve the standard of education, architectural education in Malaysia, and. Um, yeah, I mean, keep it up, guys. You know, you're doing a fantastic work, and uh, I, I, I salute the, uh, the 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 education that that the students are getting for UTM. Uh, of course, there are there is room for improvement, uh, as as there are for for many many other aspects in architecture. Uh, but you know, uh, the positives are, are are amazing enough to 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 uh, to, to take uh, into consideration. You know, okay. Um, uh, Am I allowed to share some slides, or do I just have to talk like this? Uh, if you have slides to share, uh, yeah, uh, I think I've got uh, twenty slides to share. Okay. Uh, they're all just point forms, you know. Let's let's see if I can uh, work this out. Okay, so yeah. just be patient for me. Give me a minute, about a minute. Yeah. To, to can you see the share button? At yeah. The right. Yeah. Okay. Once you click on it, you can select the document that you would like to share. Just a moment. Share on the screen. Which one? Article one, maybe? Which one? Article one. Is that the one? Ah, yes, this one. Yeah. Can we see? Yes, but it would be nice if you can put it to full screen. Full screen? Is that alright? Um, it is not in full screen yet. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah. you just try click again. Okay. Is that full screen now? Um, not really. It's still not, yeah? Yeah, it's still not. 
Mm. Yeah, I, I've tried clicking the slideshow button mm. and, and it should appear now. It's okay, I think the the wording is good enough for them to Yeah, read to I think it's good. Yeah. The wording, that's yeah. fine. I think that's oh, yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I'd like to have it in full screen so that we can yes, yes. we can do it in um, just just give me give me a minute. Sure, yeah? sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe what I'm doing is to get that in the full screen first. Can you see that? Okay. Can you go back to the screen? Can you select the window? Can you see that? Can you see that? Where did you go? The screen. The screen. The screen is on the screen. Can you go back to your screen? Ah, nice. Can you see? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. Okay. okay. <laughs> I did warn you guys, you know, uh, I'm a bit of a techno. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sorry that it's taken about, what, five, ten minutes to get this sorted out, but uh, hopefully we have a rotation. Okay. Uh, just some credit. Actually, this was. Um, uh, I, I, I did this PowerPoint presentation, a small uh, attempt at trying to uh, arrange my thoughts in, in delivering this, this topic of sustaining ethical values. Uh, I, I, I have to say that uh, my assistant architect, uh, Anish, did, did a wonderful job with this. So that's why I'm quite determined to get this done in, in the full screen. Anyway, can, can we see this, this slide? I changed it to YB and Architect. Hello. We can see it. We can see can it. You? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, first off, you know, uh, you can see in the screen, I have about eight points here. In fact, I have 16 points uh, that would sort of um, hopefully be relevant to this topic. Uh, of course, the first question on, on uh, the graduate's mind would be why be an architect? And then we'll take it from there. Where do I go from here? And then I've listed out practice, academia, government, corporate, freelance, and hurdles that uh, uh, they might face uh, as, as possible uh, concerns to, to look at. So why be an architect? We all know that the, the you know uh, create uh, you know the architect is in a creative uh, industry or profession that deals with creativity. And, and there is power in creativity. Uh, this is a very underrated uh, quality, I believe, uh, in the market, which the, the, the you know, uh, clients are, uh, normally uh, underestimate our uh, creativity because uh, we have the ability to make a difference. Everybody knows that dreams can become reality through good architecture. Uh, also, it can impact society. And then we have this wonderful opportunity to do good and you personally would get wholesome fulfillment and I put the priceless satisfaction for me at least this one no money can buy you see you know yeah? um, and then where do I go from here uh, of course to the the, 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 the uh, shared talk of the uh, external examination I talked about the possibilities of graduates going into practice or getting involved in acad academia or they might want to join the government or even uh, uh, work for corporate sectors and, and uh, other possibilities will be freelancing and, and many others, you know. Uh, that's where creativity comes in. So I just touch upon and run through uh, some of these topics uh, quickly. Um, if you 
I, I, I did a very small survey for those, uh, for the benefit of those who did not um, uh, get the opportunity to view uh, the, one of the findings that I did uh, for the external examination at UTM recently was that um, uh, about 70% of the students that uh, we interviewed uh, would actually see themselves to practice architecture. You know? uh, that means they want to be practitioners. That means they have to pass their part three exams and they have to, they have to sit for it and pass for it and, and they, they can then uh, open up an office uh, and, and go into the uh, mainstream line of their career of to be an architect. Um, I, I, I've got here, you, well, if you want to do that, uh, if you want to go for that route, then you really have to forget design for a while, right? Because you'll be get, getting involved with all the practical experience that, uh, that, that, that are needed to be a professional architect. You would have to go through all the, you know, the rigmaroles of project management, uh, you're involved with strategy submissions, the tender process, certifications, site supervision, fee collection, and then you have to manage many, many aspects of the practice, right? And uh, it's it's a long and tedious road, but um, uh, for me at least, design was in the back burner, you know? You, you, you don't see design for quite, quite a while, at least I didn't. Um, the other um, popular route uh, that uh, arising from the survey was academia uh, some of the students some percent of the students I forget how, how, how many percent now uh, but uh, you to be involved in academia I you know um, Prof Alice and uh, architect Chan would attest to this because they're involved in academia uh, you have to have the passion I believe to, to search for and share knowledge um, you can go straight to do your master's or your PhD, of course, and then you will be involved in research, lectures, tutorials, you know, all these are really noble um, uh, route to go into. And, um, uh, but I, I believe that the quality of passion is vital uh, to, to be an academic, I think, you know, you just have to be interested in um, wanting to share knowledge, you know. Um, for a long while, I I must confess that I didn't have this quality for a long time because I just wanted, you know, to see my buildings get built. You see, the ideas of what what I put on paper, I'd like to see it uh, turn into reality. You see, but uh, at at the twilight of my career, I I sort of find myself to be interested in sharing my knowledge. I think for obvious reasons because of the experience gain and. Um, um, there's so much goodness that can be can be derived from sharing knowledge with uh, especially youngsters looking for uh, for um, uh, and then we're looking at the next four the other option is for government you, you can work for government like JKR local authorities universities uh, government ministries development divisions or state development corporations you know and um, uh, but I, I, I put this cap caption as works best on noble grounds. Um, I, I don't want to go deep into this 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 um, this um, uh, caption, but uh, graduates would find uh, themselves in a situation if they join government, if they do join government, with um, some measure of authority, and uh, when uh, people are given power, you yeah, know. Uh, you can either do a whole world of good or you can even abuse uh, the power. This is where ethics come in. Yeah? And uh, my advice uh, through, through practicing architecture all these years, uh, I have been in government, mind you, when I, when I joined the development division of UITM back in the late 80s. Um, and I find that um, it, it that and that kind of environment did not suit me because I was really a doer, you know, rather than um, uh, rather than someone sitting in in high office and and looking at statutes and stuff like that. Although they are important, but um, I found the challenge different, and uh, it was against the the the, the, the grain of my uh, capacity to be interested in. You see, uh, but uh, this works best. You know, joining government would work best if you have 
quite high integrity and high ethical values, I believe, you know, and this is important. Uh, that, again, you know, corporate, the corporate sector, again, I put here, works best on noble grounds as well, uh, because you will be exposed to a lot of um, situations that you might find yourself in conflict um, when money is involved. Uh, you see, I will, I will um, touch on, on later slides, I believe, the kind of amana that is given, that means the trust given to architects in certifying work completed, right? I have signed certificates worth tens and millions of ringgit before for contractors to get paid, you see, for the work that they've done. Um, money can cloud um, many, many people into doing all kinds of things, you know. Uh, it can cloud you into doing nonsense and it can cloud you into corruption. Uh, I, I, I don't uh, skin on my words when I say that uh, you have to have a lot of uh, ethics about you and your wits about you to be trustworthy and sincere about what you're doing, you know. Um, and, and if you look at professionals, uh, all kinds of professionals, including architects, uh, you're looking at engineers, lawyers, uh, the legal uh, fraternity, uh, even doctors, I, I would dare say that the architect, we, we are exposed to uh, the kind of money that uh, you'll never see even in your lifetime, you see, you know. And uh, the, the, the amount of trust put on you uh, as a certifier of uh, work completed uh, during uh, the construction project is, it can, it can weigh very heavily on your shoulders, you see. So again, this works best on noble grounds if you do decide to join the corporate sector, right? Okay, very quickly, and then uh, we run through freelance. Uh, my caption here is risk is a privilege of freedom yeah? um, we can we can look yourselves you, you, you can see yourself going into non-government organizations the UN is a, it's a very good example uh, where you are exposed to volunteerism and, and a lot of travel uh, obviously uh, and then you can end up as a design consultant a freelance design consultant you could be even property flip and be a specialist in that um, uh, whereby you, 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 you identify derelict buildings or run-down heritage buildings or even, uh, you know, new, new built and then convert them to, um, to what you think the market needs actually, not uh, what market wants. Uh, but, and and there's, there's a very big difference between, between a developer-built uh, sort of housing uh, uh, project and what the, the actual masses want. And uh, when you when you build for the masses, it is never necessary. It is not, not always necessary that it will suit any individual uh, lifestyle. You see, yeah? then of course you can get yourself involved with design and build uh, projects as well and become a developer. Uh, you don't need the part three for this, obviously, and uh, you can travel the world and be totally independent. But of course, the risk uh, is massive because your financially, uh, your, your, I mean, your financial situation can even, uh, I would say the sky's the limit if you're, you're clever about what you're doing, you see. Yeah? So, okay, <clears throat> I've got this, <laughs> this slide as hurdles to an architect to be an AR. And I, I'm sure a lot of people will ask this question, you know, why do they have to make part three exam so difficult? Um, I touched upon this in the, in the external examination and as Prof. Alice mentioned just now, I think she briefly touched upon the dismal rate of the part three exam, the pass rate of part three exam and architect Adri Adrianto would attest to this as well. He knows my stand um, on, on this and I've been very passionate about uh, finding the reason why our part three exams are so difficult to pass. Um, architect Chang mentions that they, they, they are uh, audiences from Indonesia and, 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 and India as well. Uh, I, I don't really know about your country, but um, we did share this um, situation in Malaysia, uh, that since independence, we've only had 2,000 registered architects uh, in Malaysia. That's about a ratio of about one architect to about 13 to 14,000 population yeah, in Malaysia. And uh, that, that is very, very low actually. Uh, and and um, if you compare to, say, for example, in the UK, 
their population, their, their ratio is one architect to every uh, 1,200 or thereabouts, I believe, yeah? Compare that to ours, which is one to 13,000, you see, you know? So um, by right, we should have already reached about 20,000 registered architects, not 2,000 since independence, yeah? So our, our pass rate is very dismal and um, we believe that uh, this has to do with a lot of problems that is egging the the profession from um, the top you know the people who are uh, who are involved in uh, uh, in uh, setting the examination questions and and carrying out the uh, the, the, the the part three exam uh, syllabus and, and stuff like that so um, uh, i have suggested that um, um, universities get together and then start start uh, 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 how you say uh, lobbying government to be involved in the part three exams and then uh, try to um, uh, get involved in uh, uh, you know setting the questions and 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 marking the uh, the exam papers for the part three students I believe that will be one way to improve the pass rate you know and this was attested to by 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 my uh, co external examiner Prof uh, Salma as well. Uh, so we'll 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 see about that one. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just run through the next uh, eight slides here, and uh, and and I've got this. When you go and get stuff, but if you if you are uh, not thinking about looking for part three, or even looking for part three as well, uh, this is my advice really for graduates. You should keep together you know keep in touch with your friends form a close-knit uh, uh you know uh, fraternity among yourselves with a view to future collaboration you see when you leave uh, the school of architecture don't split up and not keep in touch you see you know look for positives and see always see the strength in unity you know and be profession creative that means you develop you know an impetus in yourself to be uh you know, uh, involved in the profession in some way or another related to the subject of architecture. There are so many ways of being a good architect, you see, you know, and not just being a, a, a professional. So you get creative and develop your unique character. So you form collaborations and look at the list that I've, I've uh, put on top of my head here. Uh, this was conjured up during, you know, uh, one of my um, lunch breaks <laughs> about uh, the past week. Uh, we can look at architectural journalism. I, I'm sure you guys have seen all this before. You can be an urban specialist tourer or documentary narrator. Uh, you can, you know, uh, an architectural photographer is, is, is already quite common. Uh, you can be a historian or conservationist or refurbishment specialist or even an events consultant for, for the subject of architecture. Uh, an architectural educator is, I, I believe it is a wider subject than an architectural academic. Uh, an educator is someone who um, who would like to see, um, you know, not just the development of architecture itself, but the development of the person that he's educating, you see, you know. So it's a little bit more than that. So, and then the other is the, the architect adventurer. I'm, I'm, I'd like to touch upon or, or, or rather encourage uh, graduates and students to um, you know uh, when when you when you look at uh, when you see when you when you go into the television network these days uh, there are programs that are documentary programs from PBC and the National Geographic they have many many of these uh, programs that touch upon either one or many of these subjects that I've just listed up you know um, and um, sustaining architects ethics in your professional career um, the word is the truth actually I mean when you're truthful to yourself you just have to be truthful to yourself then you'll be truthful to others you know yeah there's no magic uh, bullet in uh, sustaining ethics in, in your career in fact I, I dare say that um, you know um, sustaining ethics is not just to uh, uh, domain for the architect but many many other professions as well so this these are the and then the professional is are those of high integrity and repute I've listed here pilots doctors lawyers as I mentioned earlier you have accountants engineers and the architects but of all these you know um, as I mentioned 
uh, there is I believe in the market um, uh, no other profession that brings high responsibility and high integrity that requires a person of high repute uh, as, as architects you find it difficult uh, for people to be entrusted with so much weight and responsibility as the architect or even an engineer you see no? because of the massive amount of money that is involved in the in the industry for these professions right um, so that is the gist of my my um, um, my presentation or my sharing of knowledge uh, I do have some time to sort of go through uh, my career itself my career path um, which I think I will take uh, a little bit later I, I, I would like to share with you the path that, or the route that I took and um, I think uh, the last slide that I shared you know measuring success which which benchmark do you look at um, that is so apt uh, in, in trying to determine where you are going to you know yeah so whatever route that you take um, you should oh, sorry I've left up some slides here actually yeah um, yeah this is the one yeah uh, don't forget uh, to retain uh, you know the your, your your qualities in honesty on being honest which means you, you keep promises uh, the qualities of being trustworthy the quality of being sincere dependable and considerate uh, you have to take interest in what you do because you're entrusted with so much um, how you say uh, amana you know from your clients uh, and always approach your work with passion right and these are just basic principles of all good as I as I mentioned before uh, it is ingrained and it is a fitra to all human beings you know we just have this fitra of wanting to do good you see you know and um, uh, and my last slide is what is your measure of success and against whose benchmark um, here you you do it, it is best to learn the ropes of developing relationships. Uh, I put here make contacts, uh, establish contacts. Uh, this is another useful uh, pointer where you can seek patrons ahead of clients. Instead of clients, you seek patrons. That means you uh, you try to develop uh, relationships with clients who may not necessarily be appointing you. You see, you know, I had uh, in many instances during my career where um, I was introduced to paying clients by non-paying non -paying patrons, you see, you know. So that, that is another another pointer that I'd like to share. And uh, be mindful of ethical pitfalls, as I mentioned earlier, where you can or be entrusted with power, uh, where you are entrusted with power, and power can easily corrupt you, you know. Yeah? Um, and remember, always remember, honesty, sincerity, and integrity, there's nothing like these three uh, qualities that that can develop you as, as, as a person with integrity yeah so even if it seems a struggle and there's lots of uh, examples or experience that I personally went through uh, if you sustain your ethical values at the end of the day uh, the truth always prevails yeah? Yeah? Um, whatever happens and uh, uh, I should go back to my final slide which I accidentally went through, uh, and I wish everybody good luck, uh, especially the young graduates. Uh, I know it's, you know you guys are on the on the uh, at the start of a, a very long journey, and you need all the luck in the world, you know. But uh, together with luck, uh, a lot of hard work uh, and a lot of effort has to be put in as well. Yeah. So with that, I think uh, I'll end my. Uh, uh, my talk now. Thank you. Have I taken too much time? Uh, no, no, no. You, you still have time. <laughs> I do, do I? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps what I can what I can do is is um. Uh, let's see if I can mention uh, very very briefly uh, or share my story at the outset right upon when I graduated you see you know 
uh, the route that I, I took and perhaps architect Arjanta can do the same later for his session because I believe this will be very very useful for, for our students and our graduates because um, then they can fall back on some examples you see you know okay very briefly right after my graduation uh, for part two from Nottingham University that was back in 1984 yeah yeah I some of you guys were not even born then I believe you know I'm, I'm old enough to be their father uh, uh, but what I did was I was conscious of uh, getting my part three. I wanted my part three very badly when I did my uh, my architecture uh, degree and of course upon returning I was very anxious to get my part three straight away you know if it was possible for me to sit for my part three right after my part two I would have done it and it was possible for the Riva part three in the UK but then I wasn't interested in staying for too long you know I mean seven years in the UK was long enough for me so I wanted to return to Malaysia. I miss the food, you see, you know, and my mother's cooking. <laughs> and um, um, what I did was I joined, I purposely chose a firm that was strong in practice, you know, and in technicalities. That means in construction, which means that I had to sacrifice design. I love design as well, uh, but I had to sacrifice it. That went into the back of my uh, my my you know my career um, I didn't I, I it was painful actually to be honest because I, I began to sort of get involved in buildings that had no no aesthetic content at all you know it might as well have just been an, an engineering project that I was handling and my first project I don't mind sharing was a small petrol station you see the SO petrol station and uh, uh, it got built within a few months because that's what the advantage of a petrol station or small job was, was you see. I, I wanted this, um, uh, I was lucky enough to get this project and I was involved straight away. And there was nothing, no design to speak of because the design was all sort of, you know, we were given the design manual by uh, the, the, the petroleum uh, company. And uh, we just had to develop contract document documents, right? tender documents. So I went through the process of tender tender documentation. I prepared the tender documents myself. I remembered even writing my own specifications, you see, for the for the project. Yeah? And uh, my uh, my mentor then was uh, Mr. Uh, you know, Graham Moffat. I don't know whether you've heard of him uh, from James Ferry uh, Architect. And uh, he was telling me, you know, if you shouldn't be writing specifications because nobody is going to read them, you, see, you know. Yeah? But to cut the long story short, I was able then to get involved in tender documents, tendering, calling tenders as well, calling, uh, closing the tenders, and then assessing the bids from the contractors. There were like about a dozen contractors coming in. And then I was able to get involved with awarding the project to the, the successful contractor. And because the project was only three months duration, they wanted the, the, the petrol station uh, built very fast. So I was able to get a, a job under my belt in under a year, you know. And that helped me a lot because by the end of the year, I was able to sit for my part three uh, exam straight away within a year. And I passed it, you know. And I think that helped me a lot because I, sub I consciously sort of put design at the back burner. And just wanted myself to get involved in the technicalities and the pract practical aspects of getting the job done you see you know so that was my my route really uh my early route if, if you will uh in in uh, realizing my uh, ambition to 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 get my part three yeah so um uh i don't know that that, that that's useful I'm, I'm not for a moment professing that our graduates take the same route but you guys can can learn from that and then you know uh, cut your own path you see you know yeah okay I think I'll leave it at that I think I've spoken enough one thing about can I just mention architect Chan that uh, um, uh, having this webinar online you know uh, and knowing that there are 70 or 80 people looking at you 
And then, you know, I can't see them at all. <laughs> Apart from you and probably Aunt sometimes. And he goes on and off as well. Uh, he gives you the creeps some, sometimes, you know. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to an audience. Uh, that, that's, that is another thing I think virtual reality has, has, has some way to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think I've spoken enough. Thank you. Just for your for your information, we have um, 120 now. <laughs> so it's not 70 or 80, it's 120. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope I, yeah, I hope, yeah, you know, yeah. I hope you guys haven't gone having gone haven't gone to sleep, you know, while I'm talking. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but Thank but you. what you have shared, I, I personally I think is a very, very good foundation for all the students. Okay. If they right. have really listened to that, it is what will keep them go far. You know, exactly. the ethics in you, the value in you, and you can go very fast, but if you leave whatever things that you have shared earlier behind, I think I think probably they wouldn't go able to go very far. So I hope the yeah, student will be, you know, able to get something from the sharing and, and this is a very good sharing I would say. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Okay. So there are some questions for you, um, but we will keep it until the Q&A section sure. together with uh, that uh, agenda. Mm. So we will thank you again for your sharing, Architect Maslan. So now we will move to our next speaker, Architect Adranda Min Asis. It's the title of his sharing will be on um, Architect Professions and Challenges in the Post-Pandemic Era. So, Architect Adranda graduated mm. from Oxford Groups, UK, and became a professional architect in 2008. So, over the past 20 years, he has practiced at various places, including firm at UK, and currently he is the Managing Director at ARA Rad Architect. Under his practice, he has recently completed various projects, range from library, housing project, offices, and many more. So, Architect Aranda is always in a continual process of discovery, inspiration, invention, and innovation. Okay, this is proven by all of his achievement and involvement, which stretch out to close to three pages or write out. You know, when I read through Stevens, I can really see, wow, a lot of achievement. So the most recent one is the Pan Council member, uh, the Lembaga Architect Malaysia Subcommittee member, Pan Education uh, Committee Chairman, Akasia Tiputi Chairman in Education, PSMB Certified Trainer, and Architect Adranda was one of our external examiner for our school position program recently too. And I remember during the sections, he really shared a lot of valuable comments with us. And I remember his encouragement and his support over our programs. Okay, thank you so much for that. So without further ado, okay, let's just welcome Architect Adranda. Thank you, Chan. I share share the screen now. Sure. I'm supposed to do that, and, and I hope everybody can see that. Is it okay? You can see the screen now. Yeah. Okay. And I hope the coverage should be all right because I'm using the hotspot. <laughs> Is can you hear me now? Architecture? Good. Very, very right. clear. Is it clear? Yeah? No lagging yeah. yeah. Hopefully it's no, no lagging. Right. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Uh, salam sejahtera. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Chow san. Kalai wanakam. So thank you so much UTM, University of Technology Malaysia, uh, inviting us. And surprisingly, I told Dr. Ellis that, oh, you also invite my ex-boss. He's my mentor. My career path of mentor, architect Haji Nazlan bin Baharudin. I think for me, I'm looking at him as a father of my career. And then I was so happy, I was so honored uh, giving a talk today to all your students with him. So I can see that uh, architect Nazlan has shared his, his thoughts, his experience. It's so informative, a lot of uh, information that you know the, all the students can be learned, can be observed. But my slide will be very, uh, I just changed my slide because I don't want to make a lot of write-up. I just make a, a lot of pictures and I hope everybody will enjoy it. And then, you know, if you've got any question, we're going to discuss it during Q&A session. Well, uh, thank you, Architect Chan. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. Uh, Architect uh, Chan has introduced me. Yes, myself. My name is Architect Edward Ta Aziz. Half of myself as an educator, half of myself as practicing architect. And I'm also a certified trainer under HLDF. 
And I also now start to join as a developer. Uh, now coming to the six years now, a lot of my uh, housing project in Shahala. And then on behalf for Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia also, I'm a chairman as a, under education committee and the uh, media and publication. And on behalf for Lembaga Architect Malaysia, because I'm one of the member of MAPS, education of the IPT, IPTS schools, and also on behalf for Acacia. So by next year, I'm holding a big responsible to taking care of the education, the whole Asia. I will be the chairman for the Committee of Education of Architecture. So hopefully UTM, we're going to keep in touch. We're going to do a lot of program. I already spoke to Dr. Ellis that we're going to do something abroad. Yeah. Well, um, as you know that everybody, you know, uh, this is kind of a new, I wouldn't say it new anymore. It's a scenario situation that we're facing now. Well, um, I can see that uh, students always say that we're oh, facing the challenges, facing the hurdles, you know, e-learning, e-teaching, and remind me that one of my talk in Kazana National Brahat, when they asked me to share about the the uh, learning from home, yeah, teaching methods from home, where I shared uh, a few of my interviews with the teachers, lecturers, students, families, parents, yeah, I know it's a, it's kind of a, a huge challenges. But for me, I as an architect, uh, I always believe as a, you know, do not limit your challenge, just challenge your limits. Yeah. Well, um, for those who listen here, I can see about hundred, nearly hundred and twenties. Future architects, set your mind that you are the architects of tomorrow, because my talk today is about a mission statement. And when you hear from Haji Nazlan, uh, has shared a few of his thoughts, a few of this uh, uh, kind of a formula. Yeah, for me, it's kind of a formula. But me today, I'm giving you a spot, mate. It's about a mission statement. First of all, telling yourself that you are an architect. Yeah, keep telling to yourself that you are a future architect. Because architects, besides talking about the career, but for me, I always believe uh, architect is a, is a dream maker. Because we're gonna make people's dreams come true, so we are the capable person to to make uh, the the client's dream, a stakeholders, the people's dreams. We are interpreter. I shall begin with the mindset here, because you have to believe we are a normal human being. But when we call as a, ourselves as an architect, you have to believe that we have a growth mindset, and you have also a fixed mindset, left brain, right brain, and so on. So the growth mindset, keep telling to yourself that even though you face a failure, but it's an opportunity to grow. And then challenges will help you to grow. So you go and browse, you go and find out what is the growth mindset is all about. But when you're talking about fixed mindset, always have a limitation, always, you know, uh, have a perception that, oh, when we face failure, it's kind of a limit of my abilities. You're talking about negativity. So that's why I said, you have to believe, my dear students, that you have the hard skill and soft skills. Go and find out what is your hard skills all about and what is your soft skill that you need to observe, need to improve, need to explore. Because to tell you the truth, I shall begin about the quotient. Everybody here, including your lecturers, including myself, including Anji Nazlan, we, have, we are intellectual person. We have an IQ button, the intellectual quotient here. But somehow rather, we never realize that the EQ part about emotional quotient and it's about spiritual quotient need to be embarked. So there's a lot of quotient. We're talking about spiritual quotient. We, we're talking about creativity quotient, intelligent quotient, business quotient. It's all about. But for me, fundamentally, talking about intelligent quotient, your emotional quotient, and also your spiritual quotient. This is what I show here. We are a person capable to make a dreams come true through us we have our intellectual we have our emotional we have our spiritual that we believe so now eager young minds of architects tomorrow keep telling to yourself that you are an architect because as you can see everybody as a student you foresee a lot of things that you you know you you participate this journey we can't away from you know calculation holding your pants designing, uh, you know, and then you start to make a calculations, uh, start to explore, and then from, from wrong junction, you have a 
uh, mental block and then you scrap your 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 ideas and then you restart you redo and then sketch and then interpret into your your tools your softwares uh, but not only that you know after you transform your idea from papers and then transform into your softwares and then of course you're taking care of your all your gadgets your setting but you have to remember it's not only about this but you need to explore a lot of things i can say to myself when i was a student like you um when i graduated when i start to work in the building industry um i i thought to myself that oh my goodness what i've learned from university can consider about 10 percent that i can use for my working the building industry as a welcoming gateway you know but there's another 90 percent that we need to seek for your adventures because the other 90 percent is about your earning your experience observation so if you are a shy person you know keen enough to ask what is this what is that you're gonna left out so i need to declare to all of you likewise uh that the, uh haji Nasla has mentioned that his journey after he graduated from nottingham university myself i was a student in from uitm i done my part one for four years first year is from manjung and then and i continue for another three years in shahala and then i shall to tell you that I begin starting to explore my adventures when I become an internship student in architect Rekabina back year 1996. Rekabina, it was a, a few branches, but I choose Penang because it's from my hometown. And then when I explore my internship, once I've, I learned a lot because I, I'm a person always asking people, I volunteered myself, working more than uh, office hours. And after I graduated from part one, uh, straight away to University Oxford Brooks in UK, obtained my part two. Uh, after finished my part two, I came back Malaysia. Uh, before that, I have one year experience working in London. Another adventures that I seek, explore. When I came back to Malaysia, architect Rekabina called me up and I still working with them until I met Aji Nazgan, branches in PJ in Seremban. And I end up, end up that all my journey working with one particular firm and I, I choose my mentors. So Haji Nazlan was my mentors, guide me. And I know that I need to see a lot of things to learn. So this is my small journey that I hope that during Q&A session, the student can ask me further. But talking about architecture is a, is a for me, is a beautiful profession. It's not only about build a building, creating a space, but it could be beyond that. I shall share you later. But for all the students here, believe this, because when you're talking about beautiful thing, talking about career, you have to become together, come with the patience. You need a patient. When you start to call yourself, ask to yourself that I want to be an architect, but what is the fundamental about architecture? I think this is the fundamental question that somehow rather students take to time to, 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 to rephrase what it means by architecture. But for me, architecture can be go beyond. It's not only about art and science, but until now, I love my career. I'm not only doing architecture as a normal architecture, but I, I done beyond that. Architecture is not about create architecture, but for me, architecture is create others. We helping people, we helping society. So this is your career that you need to think about because Sooner or later, we're talking about challenges, especially during COVID-19. Some of the people say, oh, they don't know what to do. Okay, now I make an analogy to share to all of you. It's like a journey. Okay, when you're talking about journey, do stay patient and trust your journey now. Don't be minded don't hesitate. Whatever you're facing now, even though you are part one graduates or part two graduate master student, you be patient because your journey now, somehow or other, Imagine that you have long journey out there. What is your destiny? Where is your destination? But somehow or other journey can be like a beautiful weather. You can see a sunlight. You know, you can see a cloud. Beautiful. But you have to remember during at night, you can see stars in the skies. And then you can see the roots journey. 
you must be wonder what kind of journey that you're going to facing in front of you. But some people can create their own journey uh, with the storm. You know, you don't be upset when it's rain. This is not, this is part of our life. Because after rain, there will be a rainbow. And after storm, there will be a calm. And after the night, there's a morning. And after that, an end of that is a new beginning. So believe that because stay strong because the storm will pass and then the rainbow will emerge. I promise you that. So it means that whatever you're facing now, your episode in your life, failure for architect is a part of our, our life. Your journey will begin with a choice that you need to get up, rise, stay out of there and live fully. So set your dreams, follow your dreams, follow your passion into that. Because you need to pursue your dream. When you set your dream, make sure you need to believe your dream. Once you believe your dream, make sure you achieve your dream. So this is the, for me, spiritual part or even emotional part is a fundamental for me to share to all of you. Let's say if, don't, if no path in front of you, so you are a creative person, you have to make one path to further your journey. So do stay your patient. Uh, your journey, trust your journey, because always look on the bright side of life. Always be positive, because of course we are normal human beings. Somehow, rather we we have up and down, down and up. But I want you to become positive mindset, because whatever your dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue it. So life is a journey; it's not a destination, students. Yeah, do it with your passion. Not at all, because everyone here, including yourself now, you have your own story. So you have to remember when you start to work, work to learn. It's not work for money. I think I can declare here my ex-boss, my mentor, I've been follow him all the way, part of my journey. I never demand because of their money or what, reselling, you know what? Because I work to learn. I never think about working for to become rich or to become earn more salary, more money, but I work thinking about for freedom. So this is kind of an episode that I need to share to all of you so that you setting your episode yesterday. When you are now in a journey for finishing your part one, you have to remember there's another episode for another, you know, next journey that you can pursue for your part two. Let's say you have only for part one. Is it going to be stop of your journey? Stop your episode? Hey, come on. It's like watching Netflix. You have a lot of episode in inside office, so you have a lot of series there. So plan yourself now. Because I need to share to all of you, you need to do your milestone, your timeline here. From one episode to another episode to another episode. For example, like myself, when I finish my part one, straight away I further to my part two because I set my mind when my mentor told me that you need to go for your part three so that you can entitlement for your professional architect. But along the way, you need to list down your wish list. When you have done that, it will come together with a strategy now. In this life, if you plan yourself without strategy, some of this is pointless. So you need to do your projection here. So I hope student, two step forward, one step back, list down all your wish list. What could happen in 10 years time, your timeline here. I think this is the one I shared with you when I was a student like you. I did my timeline. They say, what happened in 10 years time in the future? I put my wish list. You remember, uh, when you do a timeline, life is not perfect but at least 70 percent will be obtained i need to declare here all my projection of timeline 70 percent obtained so you make your storyline here you see some of the people like for example now year 2020 okay what happened in year 2030 for example part one graduates you list down are you gonna work for what one year or two years are you gonna set your mind that you're gonna further your part two or maybe master student, you finish your part two, what are you going to do? Are you going to vacation? Are you going to stop uh, observing architecture? Or maybe you want to do other business? It's up to you. You make your wish list. But for me, when you do your wish list, it gives you a path, a clear projection. That's why I said, what is your story now? Create your own story. Because I have a story. Because I've run through all this journey. Ajinazlan story. So what is your story now? 
So when you create your story of your life, yeah, somehow or other you are, you know, it's like it's not a straight line, but somehow or other it's going to be a circle up and down. But for me, whatever you happen, even bad or good, is still a beautiful journey. You create your own. Even the materials also want to tell the stories. As an architect, when you create a space, when you create a building, when you create any any architecture, even the materials also want to tell the stories. So architecture actually is your life, my dear students. So set your mind that this career is the beautiful career path because it's not end up as an architect only. It can end up any kind of a career. You know, achieve your goals with your skills that you have. You have your vision now. You have your interest now. So make sure what is your values. Love an architect. I'm standing here after all my journeys, after all my episodes I have done, and I have my projection in front of me now. What could happen in 10 years' time? At least my, my, my wish list here. Then you consider yourself, this is life and architect. I'm so proud of myself and I'm so proud of yourself now that you is participate in architecture journey. It's a beautiful career, believe that. Because architecture is one of the professional elements here. But for me, it's not only professionalism only. It's about passionalism as well. So when you have talking about professionalism, you need to improve your communication skills, you need to adjust yourself how to work as a team, you have your critical thinking, you have your problem solvers, you have to embark, and then you have your ethics, and you have your humanness. Because for me, I'm still standing here, architecture is not about yourself now. Architecture is about people. Think positively. You need to be strong. You need to be motivated. You need to have encouragement, determination, imaginative and optimistic, and make sure I'm not looking for become a, a best architect. I'm not looking for the good architect. I'm not to become a popular or famous architect, but I'm looking for a happy, healthy architect. Do for that. So the unstoppable mindset that you need to stay focused and make sure you achieve your goals here. Because you have to believe nobody's perfect here, but somehow or other, you have your expertise inside you. You have a soft skill inside you. Improve that. Let's say you have a weakness. Don't expose your weakness. You have to find how to camouflage, how to, you know, hidden your weakness and showcase your expertise. So architecture, the, the, the other dimension that I want to share with you is about soft skill to become a team leadership. Because when you become an architect, sooner or later you become an architect, you're working in the building industry, this element of leadership is very, very essential. So now, I know when you invite me, you want to talk, you want to foresee what is the challenges of the post-pandemic. The dream job to become an architect is so huge prospect. Doesn't mean that you end up become a professional architect. If you really to go for it, but some already I can explore during Q&A session because I heard that it's only 20 to 25 minutes presentation that you can go beyond that as a career of architecture. But you have to make your decision. Because some already, if you finish your study, you have to ask yourself which dimension, which direction that you want to go. Some of us thinking want to be a lecturer, want to become academician, you want to become a researcher. But I explore some of the graduates they go for their expertise. They're interested about historical. They become uh, historian. They become conservator. They become heritage expert. Some of them love designing a dress. They become fashion designer as an architect. And I saw some of the architects out there, not only female, but male, they're interested to do a cake, become an architect as a chef, a cake baker. You know, you choose your decision because how you will know that it's the right decision if you never make it? Is based on your patient that I told you. Sometimes, sometimes you have to make the right decision, and sometimes you have to make the decision right. Hello. Let's see some. Some internet issue.
maybe you know architect Adrenda really wants all of you to remember this this statement okay <laughs> so a slightly long pause here so all of you remember that you know we have to make the decision right very very inspiring so sharing from architect Adrenda. Uh, I can tell you is I'm looking for the satisfaction value here. So don't be addicted about money, but you need to work learning. And so don't work for money, but work for your knowledge actually. So work for the freedom that automatically the money will come together with you. So that's why I encourage all the students, even when I conduct a part three classes, when I ask them why you want to become a professional architect, there's a very cliche answer that, oh, I want to be rich. Who said that architect can be rich? Even any profession also can be rich. But the thing is, when you set your mind to become rich, yeah, you can become rich if you want to. But what kind of rich people that you want to be? Is it going to be rich that you cannot sleep at night? Rich with an unhealthy mind or unhealthy body? Or rich that you've got a lot of debts? Or rich because you're tipu orang? Cannot orang? No. So that's why I said, for me, looking for your freedom, go for your success. That's why in the Azan, say that, Hayal al Alfala, Hayal al Alfala, Mari Menuju Kejayaan. Go for the success. It's not go for richness. So aim yourself to be successful. Money isn't everything here, but without money, everything is nothing. But of course, you have to be smart. Job that you want to do is not because of money, but you want to go with your patient to find your success. You know? So create a leaf, ready to take a risk. The future is your decision. So number one, that I need to leave the question to all of you to think about it. Who are you now? Are you a person have a, a certain skill? Are you a multiple skill? Are you versatility? List down your soft skill, list down your hard skill, list down your expertise because nobody's perfect here. I mean, one architect, a graduate architect, he's not, I can say the design is capable, but not so, not so um, highest mark, but she loved writing and then she became a, a famous architect's publicators. So he, she chose her own decision, her own path. And I met a, a one graduate loving about photography. And then he go, when he's a graduate, as a part two student, he involved himself to help the building industry on the photography and videography. Maybe I can share you during his Q&A session, but all this is about value. That's why I said, how much do you value yourself now? You want to be different, of course, but is it knowledgeable? You need to know, you know, 24 seven, even myself, I have to, you know, reading every time, went to CPD seminars, participate a short course to improve our knowledge, our understanding. But you need to decide what is your skills, what is your knowledge. And don't forget, you need to build your personal brand. now, Because you have to remember how you see yourself now, but how other people see you now. So what is your personal brand? So brand is an identity, your personality, your image, your different uh, differentiation or your commitment you have to remember what is your vision so that you will come with the value of your brand personality so you have to learn and strive this because you have to know what type of person you are i i i cannot guide you this but you need to make your list down here ask yourself now because when you want to create your brand what they're currently think of you people think and looking at you and then what you want to people think of you and what you don't want people to think about you. Are you going to show off? Are you going to be egoistic? Are you going to be talk out loud? Are you going to be so humble? So all this architecture for me is the way of life as a career. You see, so successful people never worried about what others are doing. You look sharp, focus of your journey, what to become success, you need think create an idea, you need to try, do it again and do it again and do it again and keep doing to achieve your success. 
I was so lucky to have Haji Nazlan as one of my great mentor. When he guided me all the way when I was a graduate, uh, I need to share to all of you, you need to find your mentor because the mentor mentee system is a, I think is a symbiosis, a very great symbiosis in our career path. When you be, when we have a mentoring system, you become motivated, you get an advice, you got a direction, you have a support, you have a, you achieve your goals, do some training. Because to create the professionalism, you have to remember to become a professional architect, you will come a lot of responsibility to you. We have a professional responsibilities, we have a contractual responsibilities, we have statutory or legal responsibilities, but the most important part is about moral responsibilities, it's about duty of care. All this come together with patience. I have to declare to you, if you don't have patience, your, your journey will, will end up nothing. Find your patience. When you find your patience, you have to do what you love and love what you do with the right attitude. This is the one I take opportunity to share. To, to share to all of you, even though you have a special skill, you are deanly students, you, you always score your, your design studios, you have the most highest CGPA. Without attitude, you still nothing. You always come with your right attitude because your attitude will determine your directions. Attitude is everything here, my dear student. Everything. This is the common a disease for all architects when they have EGO because ego is our enemy here. Albert Einstein said that the more knowledge, the lesser ego. When you have lesser knowledge, there you go, the more ego we are there. So what matters most is how you see yourself here because when the building industry don't expect your successful journey with no display. Maybe I can put it in Q&A session. I hope students ask me, what is the problem about our attitude? I can share with you. But goals cannot be achieved without discipline. So whatever it is, for example, the time management, you need to take in care, your, your deadline, your submission, whatever you do in the university, in UTM, it will totally reflection to your building industry experience. Sooner or later, you're going to explore this. So with the right attitude, with the optimistic uh, mindset, positive thinking. So that's why I said, your generation, you need to be, you need to be resilient here. Compared to my generation or compared to Nazlan's uh, journeys, is a is a evo evolution. But your generation is a is the most fast track <laughs> uh, evolution. During my time to design a bungalow took me about three months to complete a manual drawing. But today is like a couple hours to complete your design bungalow to your clients. Can you imagine that the fast track uh, evolution, all this technology. So with this compassion, you need to be patient. Yeah, you have to respect each other. Be ethic that what Ajinazla has mentioned to you. Be honest, but the most important part, future architects here, remember this, whatever you do, whatever journey that you face, you have to be sincere to yourself. Always remember that. This is to create your personal development. Because when you stay positive, it's about everything. But when you positive mindset will determine your happiness now. Sense of purpose is one of the directions that you need to come in mind. Because whatever you do with the sincerity from your heart, I personally tell, tell myself that I'm looking for the great satisfaction. So that when this satisfaction will come sharing with others, the secret of success is about sincerity. So now I'm asking you, don't need to answer me now. You ask yourself now, are you sincere to yourself to study architecture? Are you sincere yourself to become a graduate architect? Are you sincere yourself to become what you're going to be in your future? Sincerity is everything here. And then make sure yourself, reflect yourself that you are the person with the versatility. I'm not saying that you need an eight hands, but the way you're thinking, the way you approach, the way you manage, with the way you approach your skill, you need to become a versatility. You do ask me during a Q&A session, what means by this versatility? Because towards the end, in the building industry, you can become a decision to make a direction to become a business architect or become information architects, or become infrastructure architect, or software architect, or solution architect. It become many, many types of architects. 
but do it with your passion. So being an architect is not just designing, but to materialize the idea. It's not just having a career as an architect or having a job, but it's about giving a value to your work. It's not creating design, but it's about the understanding of people. It's not only talking about building, it's about to giving in an emotions. It's not just because of giving a solution, just because you are a creative person. It's not meeting people, meeting clients. It's about discussing and dreams because you are dream makers. My dear student, I love my career as an architect. So do you. Passion is energy. So use it wisely. I understand a lot of challenges, but doesn't mean challenges will stop you in the middle of your journey. So don't limit your challenge. I challenge your limit. Because there will be a lot of possibilities in front of you. Go and find that with your patient. Don't forget, if you have a, a failure or maybe stop you in the middle of your journey, do have a contingency plan. When you have a contingency plan, a backup plan, straight moving forward and moving forward. Even though in front of you, you have a plan A or plan B, plan C, always have a mindset that you need a backup plan a condition plan how to be survived how to be resilient generation there's always a next level a new decision a new episode of your life and make your life inspired by challenges so talking about arts there's need a sincerity and the truth and of course <laughs> do more of what make you happy so this is what steve Jobs said the only way to do great work is about to love what you do. Make sure you find your love, my dear students, because great work is to love what you do. Never stop exploring, my dear students. Now, open your mind, open your heart, create your positive energy, positive mindset. It's about time to create your signature. Love architecture, dream, keep dreaming big. Once you create dream big, you have to believe your dreams and make sure you achieve it. Because we're talking about great dreams, it's about giving, it's about relating, exercising awareness and trying out, create the direction and resilience to find a balance with your emotion and acceptance and without value, it doesn't be meaningful. Create your dream. Believe it and achieve it. I understand studying architecture now, pain full, but pain is temporary. But the pride is forever. So before I end up my 25 minutes here, I giving a sharing with you eight loving affirmation to tell yourself every day. Number one, keep telling to yourself that I'm a good person and I'm confident in who I am. And I keep telling to yourself that I'm proud of myself because I'm doing my best, my dear student. Set your mind that you are powerful and keep be stronger and stronger, stronger. And I matter that the things that I do are matter. And I trust myself completely. And I have faith in the decision I make. Positive person, you are attracted with positivity. And I forgive myself for any mistake that I have made in the past. So forgive yourself now. So keep believing in yourself with your vision, with your dreams. To build up your future, you have to know the past. And then, of course, very simple five rules to make you become a happy and healthy architect. Number one, love Allah, do good, always forgive, no harm to no one, and be positive. So keep praying to God because Allah will create the journey, beautiful journey that you believe. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay cool, pray for everyone's safety, keep saving. Always remember you, you design your life the way you want it to be because you are the creator of your own destiny. Inspired by the past, built for the future because success is the journey, not destination. All the best to all the future architects 
always remember you are the architects of the body. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think, All right. Yeah. From the response, you can see the student is is really really inspiring. Um, <laughs> How many yeah. That? yeah. Um, yep, I can see a lot of wisdom in the sharing, um, a lot of um, um, motivation in it. Okay, which is which is I think is really useful for the student to really Inshallah, define, yeah. yeah, to define their early early time as a student now, be, you know, to prepare them for the they are once they graduate to prepare them for a journey ahead. Right. Yeah, believe it or not. Um, the 10 years planning is one of the assignments I give to my students. Wow, it's, look at the it's four years so back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I, I hope that I hope that you know it would it wouldn't just be an assignment they submit to me, but it is right. something they carry and they're gonna refer to it once they graduate and know the journey ahead. So yeah, that was uh, but my planning is up until they set up their own practice. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Yeah, so that they, they I hope anybody that. can ask me what is my plan in the future. <laughs> because when when I heard Dr. Ellie said to me that uh, my presentation is about 20 to 35 minutes, because normally I use about 30 minutes to 40 minutes. So I scrapped the other half of my slides and I hope that can share if any question to ask me what is the the the, the next episode that you can foresee. So that's why I keep my slide, half of my slide that I observe and I sharing the experience to all the future architects. Nice, nice. Okay, so right. we will um, move into Q&A section now. So, yeah, um, we are receiving some questions from the floor. Uh, the question that architect, um, architect Adranda mentioned earlier, and maybe I can ask that, what is your coming, <laughs> coming planning? Because you know, it's very interesting to know too. Okay, um, do we have architect Naslan here? I think so, yeah. I think yes. it's here. Ah, there you go. Good, good. <laughs> okay. Naslan, I just share what, what, you, what you advise me. I just echo what you said to me before. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Adrianta, architect Adrianta has always said, uh, have uh, an overdose of passion, you know. Uh, it is an amazing quality to have. Um, that that can get uh, people very very far actually yeah so you know students take do take heed uh, at the end of the day as as he rightfully say um, the passion will carry you through if nothing else will you know yeah because when when you're passionate about something especially a subject that you love it doesn't become work anymore you know it becomes a vocation it becomes a hobby really so uh, it, it is very important to have that that foundation uh, yeah. And of course, all that will drive you towards all things good, you see, you know, yeah. And um, I mean, yeah, success again, I mean, he talked about success. How do you measure success really? Um, because, and, and he rightly says, you know, my, my former, I just share a small story with you. My former boss used to say that, yeah, architects, uh, you can drive a Porsche, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, if you hope to drive a Porsche, you can. Uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, is 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 that really what 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 you what you're looking for, or what you want? Will that make you happy? You see, you know, yeah. Uh, we do have the capacity, we have the potential to make it big. Um, but really, the benchmark, I mean, the benchmark really is your your own your own sincerity, as as Adrianta says. You have to be sincere to yourself, and um, if you end up. Uh, being passionate about the subject, then you know you will do good for society. I think that's the measure of success I would take with me. You know, at the end of the day, you you're happy to see your clients happy. You're happy to see the people who use your buildings happy. I mean that that really is priceless. No money can no, no money can buy that. <laughs> I and, feel like uh, the jabu now. When <laughs> I miss your voice, I miss your advice, and then suddenly we <laughs> feel like the jabu. The jabu. I can take chance to tell this. I. But Chet Aslan with me is all the way up when we, he always never stopped advising me uh, to tell these stories. It was set in my mind and then now at the moment yeah. that I share it, it's like echoing what he said to me before. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so yeah. much. I, I think, yeah, that is the beauty of it. Once, you know, when we continue sharing what we know, 
our knowledge has yeah. become something so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, okay. yeah. Correct. Okay. Now, I... what we would want to move into the Q and A section. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we have some questions here, but uh, we we also hope that the students will keep on posting your questions. You see, there are a lot of questions that um, both speakers uh, would like. You know, would like all of you to ask to know a bit more from them. It's okay. So the first question is for Architect Aslan. Okay, it's from Dr. Ennis actually. Okay, what is the current situation of the industry in the country and the acceptance to become professional architects by the society as there is an issue of skill of minimum speed? <laughs> okay, that, that, has to, that has to do with ethics as well, actually, you know, yeah. so it's, it is very appropriate. Um, yeah, for graduate architects, you will you will come to a point in time where you know you have to compete. For example, uh, no matter what line you choose, you know to, to go into. Obviously, if if you go into say for example to be a like like if you go into three D visualization or be an expert or specialist in VR, the competition might not be there. But uh, sooner or later, you will have you know somebody to compete against, and uh, professional architects have each other and um, we we compete by means of looking at our design really for example but even design also competition I would dare say that you know no two architects would please one client for example right I mean each will have their own unique style um, the taste is different kind of thing you know so every every uh, architects that you you read about for example the super masters of the 20th and 21st centuries they have their own uh, idioms to design and stuff like that, you know, a certain group of people will go for Zahadi, another group of person will go for Frank Lloyd Wright and stuff like that, right? Um, but to me, um, the, you know, linking this with the scale of minimum fees, all architects have to charge a fee in some way or another. In Malaysia, in our, in our country's context, we do have what is called the scale of minimum fees. This is nothing new actually, yeah? It is an adaptation of the British system uh, from the Royal Institute of British Architects. And uh, strangely enough, I, I believe, uh, I think Adrianta can attest to this, the British have thrown the scale of minimum fees out the window. They don't, they don't have this anymore, you know, strangely enough. Now, me personally, I, I think it's, it's, still, it's still vital to have that, um, that scale. Uh, I think simply because we, I think, we have not matured as a society, yeah. Uh, I, I, and that is a little bit unfortunate because we do have um, more of a culture of um, almost like dog eat dog indismissible. This is from my experience and my opinion, right? So it is an appropriate question. The architects, we have to keep our wits about us. Um, sometimes when you 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 have just got your professional qualification right and then you're out to set up an office and the most that worries you is how to keep uh, your practice afloat for example and then you're struggling to meet and and meet your paying bills and you've got mouths to feed at home and stuff like that you do uh, find yourself you know in the situation where you have to compete and sometimes you are tempted to get out from the scale meaning you, ha you, you, you sometimes charge your clients below what is prescribed by the Institute of Architects and the Board of Architects that you can charge, you see. Now, um, you, we are trading on dangerous grounds here because, you know, uh, it is a public forum. Uh, if you ask me, architects never go down below the fees, I would say they will be lying, you see, you know. Yeah? Uh, the reality of life is that, you know, yeah? if you have uh, um, how you say priorities and their priorities are, uh, are life threatening for example then no amount of rule books are going to keep you in place you see you know yeah and I, I would say when you reach that when you reach that threshold right you really have to dig deep and think about what you yourself are all about you see you know <clears throat> and that's where I personally turn to Allah you see you know? I turn to my creator and uh, nothing beats um, uh, a doa from him to, to show you guidance, you see, you know, yeah? 
and sometimes you win sometimes you lose in um, how you say in 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 uh, fighting against your own self you know uh, you might be tempted to go below below the, the minimum fees and um, uh, I won't name names but um, professionals have told me before in in um, in private that if you want to do it don't get caught you know uh, but to me uh, that is not a very good advice really because eventually if nobody is nobody else uh, sees you doing uh, what you're not supposed to do your creator sees you you see you know yeah? uh, he always sees what you're doing so as long as you've got this conscience of uh, of Allah and you fear him you will do the right thing what needs to be done now okay on the professional aspect uh, it is important to adhere to the scale of minimum fees simply because if you if people start abandoning this this minimum fees then you can imagine it becomes like a cattle market is you know yeah and uh, the profession would uh, take a nose dive as I believe it has happened in the UK uh, I believe in the Western countries where the minimum fees has been abandoned rightly or wrongly I would say more wrongly rather than rightly uh, you see a gap opening up, you see, I'm sure. Because you see a lot of the top architects, they would be the ones who can afford to charge uh, not even below minimum fees, they would charge you the sky. You know, and clients are willing to pay for it simply because they've made a reputation of themselves, you see. They've made a name for themselves. So more, more often than not, clients normally buy the name of the architect and put into their project to market it. So the clients, in that situation they're willing to pay because having a famous name tagged to their, their building sells you see, you know so if it helps sells if it helps the business they're in a position to pay the architect you see you know yeah now what of the fresh graduate who just set up office yesterday for example you're not in that position you see you know yeah so you have to have your wits about you i would say that choose your clients then you know uh, if the client has a tendency to undercut your fees or to negotiate, then that is the client you don't want to have actually in the long run. Um, more often than not, in my 40 years experience, I found that to be the case. Yeah? Whenever a client undercuts you or you know uh, doesn't pay you well, you're not going to get any favors from him. You know? Right up to the end of the project, he's going to be a potential bastard. You know? And um, I say this with no remorse. Because there's so many of them out there, you see, you know, uh, it's a it's a cutthroat industry, and that is why the subject is so appropriate, you know. Yeah? Ethics is is really uh, required for the profession, and um, for the young graduates, stick your stick to your guns. Because at the end of the day, I think um, in the long run you'll see, you know, the the wisdom of being honest to yourself, and the wisdom of um, developing your integrity and maintaining you know? yeah. um, I don't mind sharing that in the twilight of my years I have never had I don't have this problem anymore of undercutting fees uh, and I seem to be attracting clients who uh, know my worth probably because of the the track record that I've built over the years uh, that help obviously but you don't build a track record overnight you see you know? that's that's the um, that's the gist of it and um, uh, like uh, Adrianta says, uh, it is a long journey. And for them, you know, they just started their journey, but start on the right footing. And yeah, I just like to add also that a good ending also is is, is very vital. Yeah, try to try to. My advice is try to um, have in your plan or in your map, your career map, um, small good endings. You see, you know good endings to a project, good endings to a meeting, good endings to a relationship, for example, right? Good endings to a career, good endings to whatever that you do, you see, you know? Try to uh, aim for small steps, you see? And eventually, you, you'll get to the, satis the level of satisfaction that you richly deserve, you see? Yeah? I hope that answers the question. So in, in, in a very short uh, answer, stick to the minimum fees as much as you can and as best as you can. Inshallah, you, you won't regret it. Okay, yeah. I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah.
Thank you, Architect Maslan. Okay, and the next question is for Architect Adranda. Okay, it's very, very related uh, to the student. Uh, okay, what is the preparation that we should do as a fresh graduate to start life as an architect? You know, is getting up to country quickly is relevant or is it getting a lot of experience much worth it? All right, thank you, Vichai. I think this is a very common question to me. Uh, when I started uh, conducting this uh, call, Learning Architecture Practice Platform, and then I took myself and my partner, Architect Rida, when we create this platform training for trainers, uh, certified trainers under HRDF, uh, we saw these very common things when we saw, they say that, oh, to taking a part three, we need to uh, gain uh, experience. What, 10 years experience? Five years? Because I, I consider myself, after 10 years experience, then I participate this part three. But actually, when we experimental, consider as experimental, we did advise because I always went to the school, went to the universities to encourage them as a young architects, graduates, pursue to prepare themselves for part three. We we had a successful story from young graduates after they finish their part two. We advise them straight away to register themselves as a graduate architects under Lembaga Architect Malaysia, and then the. The, the requirements have to be complying for 108 weeks experience and then while while in the journey of experience for 108 weeks it consider two years they already started exploring the syllabus the subjects and you know they they went to the class and then when come to the third year the injection of the preparing for the notebook orals uh, written exam and surprise, it's not considered surprisingly, but majority they, they follow this system and they pass the part three. Can you imagine our, our, our statistic? We had about more than 10, 27 and 28 years old uh, professional architects pass the exam in our class. And don't forget, we also have a record that the most oldest uh, architect 62 years old went to our class and passed the exam for one time and one shot so it's not about you fresh you well experienced it's not about that for me it's not about you need again experience or what or you need to be knowledgeable or what i think for me it's about preparation with your passion when you be motivated when you have your projection you determine yourself doesn't matter how old are you what is your background stories because every more every people have a good commitment but when you have a sharp direction when you have a determination you go with the system and strategize your 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 plan i think you're gonna carry the only thing fractions when these young graduates like 27 28 years old when they obtain the entitlement of professional architect then they're not in hurry to open up their firm they're still working with their bosses their bosses now to serve the, the company so this is very surprising by saying that it's not about to take a battery and then open up a firm straight away uh, for me that's not a milestone I think the entitlement is important because when you got the entitlement you become a professionalism okay you could do anything what you want actually so mostly i can tell you to all the students who really go for entitlement for ar the entitlement for ar part three it's not because of you want to get a part three and then straight away to open the firm. Actually, there's another story. When you want to open the firm, I think Haji Naslan guide me very, very well. It's not easy. You need to explore how to learn. I, I did ask a few seniors. I observed a few seniors how to open up a firm. But a lot of things because I, I remember when I read uh, Ken Yang's uh, articles, GDR, how to get a job. Yeah? Then how to... Uh, doing the job and then how to rescue the job so for me it's not because to, to open a firm but the professional is the package so I encourage all the students this is my, my, my advice when especially for master student when you graduate your part two don't waste your time straight away go and register yourself as a graduate architect under the Baga Architect Asia. then you can set your plan if you want to be fast for two years go ahead but you can consider yourself like five years, six years, go ahead. 
with your plan that I I thought just now you need to plan your patient into it your your timeline to it. So my encouragement is register yourself at Greater Tech and you make a decision where and when to do it. That's my advice. Agree, totally agree. That's what I advise my students. Correct. And I always, I always use this gap strategy. I say if you don't do it now, later they might have chuck fall, you know. So, <laughs> so you better do it fast. Yes, better do it fast. Let's do it fast, yes. Yeah. Thank you for the, the, the experience sharing regarding that. Now I want to back to Architect Nasla. This is a question from uh, Anas Budamad. Okay. Talking about ethical values, okay, getting into the real building industry will let you see the darker sides of it. Um, it will be much appreciated if you could um, name some of them and how do you deal with it in order to maintain your integrity toward your career as an architect and at the same time making good money from the industry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not very, 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 yeah, very appropriate question. Very appropriate question. I think you know that one. You can write a book. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll have to fall back on some of my experiences. I don't think I'll be able. You know, we don't have time to 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 list them all, all out. Uh, yeah, have, having been through through many situations, uh, a, a few springs to mind. Uh, um, I did mention earlier in my talk that. Um, the, the, the architect is entrusted here yeah, with uh, with one of probably if not one of the most um, is is one of the most uh, is is one of the most heaviest um, amana here yeah, uh, where clients need the opinion of the architect as a professional to certify works completed yeah uh, on site by the contractor. And uh, this trust um, weighs heavily upon the architect's shoulders when the project, uh, the, the value of the project reaches billions, hundreds and millions of ringgit, you see. You know? uh, I can share one particular story where in one project that, that I, I managed uh, some years back, uh, we, we, we had to certify, obviously, progress um, work that was done by the contractor there was one particular component to the building which had to do with uh, air conditioning compressors and mechanical services right and they ran into tens of millions of ringgit and uh, uh, a stack of certification documents was put on my desk for my signature right um, already signed by the various parties to the contract including the mechanical engineer who are supposed to be in charge of that particular section of the work that component of the work because it's got to do with air conditioning um, but at the end of the day the architect <coughs> is the final certifier yeah where the clients and sometimes it's not even the client you know is the client's financial for example for big projects which involve public money you're looking at the Ministry of Finance, you're looking at ministries, you know, sometimes you're looking at the banks themselves who finance the project, they will not bank on the word of the contractor saying that I've completed so much for my work, please pay me. All right? They will always rely on the architect's certificate. That is the amana that I'm talking about if um, uh, our, our students understand where, where I'm going with this. So the burden of um, honesty, you can imagine, is placed upon the shoulders of the architect, very heavy, because you're signing literally tens of millions of ringgit worth of project, you know, at any one time. To say that, right, the job has been done to specifications and been done on time, please pay these guys, you know. So that's, that's what the certificate entails is, you know. That particular incident, when it was given to me, um, for some reason, I hesitated, and then uh, I took it upon myself to uh, do some investigation. Right? Of course, the best investigation is to go to the site, have a look for myself, and be completely satisfied that the work has been done accordingly to what has been claimed in the 
in the uh, in the bills you see no right um, unfortunately it was just before uh, a major festivities yeah? like Hari Raya or Chinese New Year I forget which now and if you guys know about this uh, situation in Malaysia the contractors or even you know people will use the festivities as an excuse you know look you know Hari Raya is just around the corner please pay me quickly like you know I want to celebrate and stuff like that I want to give bonus to my staff then the day, um, the pressure was there and uh, I didn't have time then to go to the site so what I did next was to call up my um, resident architect on site and get him to take some photographs you know of the so-called installation of that particular component so he came back with the photograph of the building that is supposed to house that component yeah because it, it was a central cooling system so you can imagine the huge amount of compressors that was supposed to be placed in that particular building a whole building um, it came back with the photograph the photograph showed nothing it was empty you know that that was an example uh, a real life example that I came across uh, the claim was like running like the, about 30 million uh, ringgit and uh, it was signed by the mechanical engineer saying that it has been delivered it has been installed you see and with all other signatures as well and I, I obviously I, I got really upset and got angry actually to be, to be honest and um, I gave a very strict warning to the contractor that if this happens again I, I, I told them that you know um, I'm not signing this obviously and uh, let me not catch you doing this again so I, I let him off the hook uh, for a bit and told him that I, sh I should really report this to the client what you're doing is wrong obviously because you're asking me to certify something that you have done but you have not actually delivered you see yeah so this is one of the things that has to do with ethics you have to have about your uh, you know a strong wits about you in doing what is right la. that's basically it actually so that's one I think that is probably the most powerful example I can share there have been other examples as well um, sometimes involving clients as well la, yeah? I did mention just now that I shared say for example for those of you the pitfalls are everywhere la, the challenges are everywhere not just in private practice uh, it can be even in government you see yeah? government or even as as, uh, as a salaried architect in, in a private developer's firm for example you're always exposed to temptation because of lots of money involved and uh, you find that contractors will want to take you out for a drink or for a huge dinner and stuff like that you see you know and this is where the ethical values the fundamentals of your 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 person as being a good person takes precedence you know right? um, clients for example you know architects working in in government sector uh, when architects work for the government for example they are normally in a position of authority right uh, local authorities for example they're in position to uh, either um, issue a, a building permit for your project or they are they are they, they won't issue a build, build, uh, building permit they're in a position to even uh, dictate whether you your building is fit for 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 purpose or fit for fitness or, or fit for occupations you know in the good old days is the CF now is the CCC but even when the architect is supposed to issue this certificate of compliance and completion the local authorities would want to have some say you know in Malaysia we know that the situation is unique because often the case um, they want the glamour but they don't want the responsibility yeah? they want the glory but they don't want the uh, the hard work you know yeah? and um, you sometimes find yourself in a situation where uh, you have to answer to even juniors you see you know yeah? um, graduate architects for example I mean I don't disrespect the graduate architects but you know most of them when they go into a position of authority they lose themselves you see you know they think they know it all and then they say look I will the stick here you don't follow me you're gonna to listen to me if not you know then you face the consequences you see again the ethics the ethical value is important right you may be right you may have the right to be um, how you say uh, responsible for the the power that's given to you 
but do with do it with dignity right do it with respect do it with adapt you know yeah uh, i have many stories to tell about this situation as well though, but um you'll take too too long <laughs> yeah suffice to say that you know it's so important um to have a good dose of ethics you know? in, in fact no matter what you do especially so for 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 architects you know? yeah? and again i want to stress when you have this you will really go far in life you know? yeah? you'll be looked into as a very uh, respectful person you'll be looked up from uh, with your you know uh, from your peers as as a person of high integrity and and stuff like that everything good about you will be will be mentioned you see even if it's not you know don't, don't worry about that because in the sight of allah that's the most important uh, benchmark really you know yeah? as long as you know you're doing right and you're doing it right for the sake of him um, you should be happy with yourself that you're doing well you see so these are some of the the the, fit, the pitfalls the darker side of the profession and every profession has that you know yeah? uh, okay yeah. i hope Very that helps well. yeah yeah Okay. Uh, uh, we will have we the will next question from the same audience, uh, Hanafi Rama. Uh, right. In his question, uh, this is the question is for Akita Ajanda. Okay, and uh, this question has three questions <laughs> that the student is uh, really passionate or more, which is good. Okay, uh, how do you keep positive and passionate uh, as an architect during pandemic era? As we can see, many businesses were affected. And some of them did not survive. Okay, can you share with us how do you overcome this? And you do, if you do not mind, okay, your future plan for the post-pandemic. Uh, yep, something we want to know. And looking back to all the um, the raising DIY designer during pandemic, which mostly utilizing internet as their main source for design inspiration. Okay, how do you take this positively? to the sustainability sustainability of the small architectural or interior design business is this a good sign for the industry yeah right okay thank you architecture okay the question from hanafi yeah hanafi rahman yeah? Okay. so first of all when you remember my my talk just now you know you have to be sincere to yourself you have to be uh, humble not timid but be humble uh, when you want to be positive, you always have to be mixed around with the positive people. That's the tips now, you know. If you want to be positive, you always set your mind a positive thing, especially after after Subo when you wake up, you know, when you pray and you doa, you know, you you know, you talk to, to your creator by saying that, you know, you know, you are the, the most humble person. That's why I said, you know, when you come to sincerity, you humble yourself to your creator, you know, you, you want to have a healthy condition so all these things is a is a fundamentals so i shared i shall share to you what happened when it was first lockdown last year march 2019 yeah obviously the first week lockdown everyone will come to shop don't know what to do you know <laughs> remember so first week uh the first thing is when we face this this pandemic covid 19 yeah Everybody start to mumbling. Everybody start to be, become panic. Everybody's thinking it's a bad thing, you know, scared and everything. But for me, I declare to you, I told, I speak to myself and I pray to do through through my dua. I say, Alhamdulillah. I say this is a blessing. First thing I say it's a blessing. I don't say this is a curse or what because it's, everything is from Allah. And I say it's a blessing. Alhamdulillah. When I say it's a blessing, it's already set your mind as a positivity. Because you already live to yourself, your soul, to him, and everybody saying this is blessing. Alhamdulillah, it's blessing. So the first thing, the first week when you face lockdown, I was like, oh, okay, culture shock. Because we are normal human beings. We don't know, okay, what is the next generation? So scrap away, took a piece of paper, and I have to list down what I'm supposed to do. And I foresee that when you say lockdown, I think government said they're being extended a few months. Remember, Akita Chan? They extended, extended until what? Three months with the lockdown, stayed at home. Where is it? So when I make a wish list, that's why a projection, I spoke to my partner, let's do something. You see, with our creativity, you have to believe you are a creative person, 
you have your expertise what to do you list down what's your expertise what's your skill that you have to do so second week my partner Rida and myself we are conducting the zoom online under MPC we approach MPC Malaysian Productive we conduct the online uh, talks many series of course you didn't do anything you cannot go out to do anything so what we choose is to to take a class to educate public with our knowledge and we learn from it's not only to share but we actually we learn from the public we learn from the expert so many series online that time in march april may june i have all this record when we conducted it people was shocked and they said okay you know wake up you stay at home don't know what to do you know you just listen and share the knowledge and and you know enhance your knowledge so coming back to the when the challenges are post pandemic so there's the thing that i want to make all the students hear this as an architect student or even as an architecture background you have to remember you have a lot of skill now post pandemic it doesn't mean that it's people perception always remember it's about perception it's about negativity people say oh can you do anything i tell you students when i speak a few graduates you could do this you could do that you could do this you could do that with your expert and then there will be retractions after that imagine a graduate artist architect couldn't do nothing he become a grab driver and now he become an expert in kl street now and then start to involve with Jabatan Warisan as a advisory for which street, the background of the street, the background of the streets and everything. Imagine become a grab driver to survive and the same time you become an expert to go any street in KL and in straight away you Google and read and then and record it and you, you have a knowledge about what is the background of the street. And what is the surrounding urban design about that. So in the same time you become grab driver, you meet people connection networking and at the same time you become an expert about kl and i met one graduate uh no actually she's not graduate she's a young professional architect during lockdown when we discuss this is why i said when you discuss brainstorming each other how to make this this, this and she find out during lockdown and post pandemic now she's still running her, her, her practice but now she have a business doing a cupcake as an architect doing cupcake and then she declared that doing cupcake better than doing a practicing architecture Naslan. Can you imagine that? Cupcake dia lagi laku daripada buat practice. Sebab practice a long journey to, to obtain the fees but the cupcake is just cash on delivery. Every day she got a cash and sustain her life. Become an architect. Can you imagine an architect background designing a cupcake? It's not a normal cupcake, okay? It will be very interest, interesting, colorful cupcake and then it's got a design form and function wonderful can you imagine that so we're talking about post pandemic now to become an architect why you want to hear all these whatsapps all this viral about negativity so for me i scrap that i'm looking at possibility now i'm not hearing all this negative perception i want to move forward and make sure it's not about you alone you have to create your group and umah to food move forward always brainstorming each other what's supposed to do as a young architect professional architect helping your graduates so we never stop uh, uh putting 24 7 creating a class online class for a young graduate to take a part three during a lockdown we rise their spirit say do come on this is an opportunity it's a blessing you cannot do work now you stay at home okay we create a class share their experience share their knowledge about how to prepare yourself to take a part three and now they are ready to take a part three for this coming six december for their oral exam can you imagine that without waiting doing nothing during lockdown last year even like this year they are well prepared during online teaching online learning i got so many experience to share but unfortunately we have a, a nick of time now but for me to conclude this hanafi stop thinking negativity stop hearing all those virals in in whatsapp or in tiktok whatsoever scrap that always think of positivity and don't forget keep doa because the creator who do Allah Ta'ala yang buat benda ni semua and then you stop complaining you should say Alhamdulillah it's a blessing we are human beings we go forward and how to enhance this to become better and better 
and with sincerity and with your passion. You have to love your career. That's why I say a lot of opportunity out there waiting for us. It's the only thing is you go and find that. So for me, two things to define yourself now. Number one, when you have nothing, it's about your passion. But when you have everything now, it's about your attitude. So which attitude that you want to go is your call. That's my answer to Hanafi. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, when I just look at today's talk, I think it's, it's blended so nice. Well, architect Naslan help us to help the student and help all of us to look at how we should, you know, make sure we have um, rooted well in our attitude. Well, architect Adranda asks us how to shoot for the stars. So, you know, both come hands in hands, which is really, really uh, a, a good, a good uh, career talk for the student. Okay, we move to the, there will be another, which is the last question for architect Maslan, and there will be another question for architect Aranda after this, okay? Um, for architect Naslan, the coming questions actually is quite similar to to the one answer earlier, so I will not be asking on that. I, I'm just been. I, I think I will be asking. Um, this is the question from from me, uh, but I'm asking on behalf of the student. So when you are looking hiring your assistants or your project architect, you know what kind of attitudes you know you are looking for from them, and which one is actually the most important? You know when you hiring when you are yeah you interview when you hire your your staff uh, you need to unmute yourself please unmute uh, yeah yeah thank you this thing uh, mutes itself automatically yeah i think <laughs> because i i didn't touch that you know that button so sorry okay okay never mind i'm not blaming the computer yeah uh yeah very, very appropriate question actually and i think um uh, appropriate for the audience as well. Yeah. Um, what do we look for? Um, we used to look for the the, the obvious, um, which was a good qualification, a good grasp of the understanding of the subject. Obviously, uh, it helps if they are good designers, right? And then um, it helps also that if they know the fundamentals of putting up buildings because in practice that's that's the the but the main concern really how to make the design work you see you know um, but as as we progress and as we matured as 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 a, a practice architect recommend when uh, further than that I, I personally now prefer uh, a very healthy attitude towards uh, work itself and towards the career of that person, you see, yeah. Uh, the attitude to want to learn, I think, would be easily one of the topmost criteria now, um, because sometimes it's it's um, it's it's a given that you have the technical skills, and especially now, you know, with with the internet and uh, with information at your fingertips. Um, I, I would say almost any Tom, Dick and Harry in architecture can produce good buildings and good design. And uh, having, uh, but if, you know, no, no matter how qualified, highly qualified they, they are, if they don't have the attitude uh, to cooperate, uh, you don't have the attitude to learn, they don't have the attitude to seek for knowledge, then they're not going to go very far, you see. Yeah? Um, the attitude of respect, for example, is very important as well. Yet then, you know, when, when you have all these very basic fundamentals, then you begin to see yourself as, as, as a, a true human being, you know. As I said, uh, every, every baby is born into this world has got a fitra of doing or wanting to do good. Well, not when you're a baby, obviously, and not during your adolescent years, while you're growing up because you know you're governed with um wanting uh, uh nafsu you're 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 governed with, with, with nafsu wanting uh, to play and and to 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 eat and stuff like that 
but as you as you mature in, in your adult adult life, um, the the need to be at peace with yourself becomes of paramount impor importance. I, I suppose I speak this uh, from from this point of view as a, as an old person, as a father, and and as a, a grandfather now, and and you know I look at. Uh, the youngsters as, as my own children as I, I keep mentioning I see the graduates that you have when I see them I see I see my daughters you see you know uh, struggling uh, to, to make it good in this world and as any father would want their children to be more successful than themselves you see you know yeah? so uh, and the the fundamentals are so important because if you have those fundamentals of um, of having good attitudes then it will take you very far, very, very far, in fact. Because all the skills you can learn along the way. Yeah? But the attitude, if you don't have the attitude, or if your attitude goes south, for example, it gets worse and worse. You become more aggressive with people, you become more arrogant, for example, you know, then uh, you're not going to get very far. Yeah. You may be very knowledgeable, but people will see you with a blinkered eye, you know, and say, you know, this guy, you know, he sees, he takes some doings, you know. Yeah. So, um, and and the other thing, of of course, to me, I just like to stress on also having a quality of gratitude. You know, also is very important. If you are grateful for what you have, and you are grateful for any situation that you come across, uh, like uh, Ajanta says, you know, if you are thankful to Allah for what He has given you, then He will for sure He will give you so much more. You know. Um, it doesn't matter what faith you are from, uh, but this happens time and again. I mean, you know, to everybody, I think. Once you're grateful for what you you achieve or what you have, then uh, for sure you'll get more. You know. Yeah? So um, it doesn't mean that you know you 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 are clever or you are a good designer, you're a brilliant designer, you'll get the next job. I found that out also. You know, it doesn't it doesn't mean that if I for one awards, for example. Clients will come knocking on my doors. No, that's not, that's not, that doesn't happen, you see, you know. Yeah? You can win any awards you want to, but at the end of the day, if you're not grateful for what you have, then he's going to shut the door on you. That's that's a given. <laughs> I found that out from my experience at least, and I think that's universal experience from everybody, you see. You know? yeah? So, yeah, attitude is very, very important. Very, very important. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your sharing. I hope the students really pick it up. It's going to yeah. be useful for them. Okay, okay, now we come to the last question from Akita Adranda. Uh, from, from Lee Siu Jing. Okay, thank you for the amazing sharing. So regarding to cre regarding creating values, okay, do you think the high turnover rate in the architecture industry, mostly due to the young designers, are uh, hardly find finding values while working in the company? Okay, do you have any tips for the students for all of them in searching their own value, even though they do not enjoy the working culture in that particular company? Right, that's a very interesting question, actually. From who, eh, uh, Gita Uh, Li Xiu Jing. Li Xiu Jing, eh? Okay, Li Xiu Jing. Thank you for that question to post to me because I, I would like to share to, to not only to you, but to all of us, including myself. Yeah, including myself. So when you want to find any, um, when, when you, where, while you want to justify your values, I think you cannot justify by yourself, actually. You need to justify your values by 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 people that you appoint appoint you to work with. You know, I, I for example, I, I can explain it to to my experience and kind of an analogy to 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 you to understand. When I worked with Rekabina, not not with Nasran that time, I, I was worked with Penang Branch Rekabina. Um, when after I graduate and I have an experience working in London. Uh, even I don't want to tell my London experience because London experience is kind of a unique uh, experience. But the thing is, when I came back to Malaysia, came back to my hometown, first thing my my, my ex boss called me is that Are you in, in Malaysia now? I said yes. So can you come and see me tomorrow? So first thing he said, Okay, are you got any job? I said not yet. So first thing is when he asked me like that, 
I know that he only foresee my value. But I don't ask what is my value. You, I will thankful that oh, he offered me the job. The first thing is, I never ask how much is my salary. Never. I never ask. He the one who indicate the salary. So, of course, if you follow your nafsu, say, ah, yeah, your salary is so small. Huh? But I, I never look at that. Okay. But I want to discover how to increase my value. So, first thing is, when you start to work, number one, you do respect with these people that your mentor or your team works and everything, and you do respect to yourself. Find the respect. Then when you find the respect, you have a great environment, positive. Every day is like what when you wake up in the morning, you feel that I can't wait to arrive in the office to do my work. I don't know how you can define that, but you need to define that. Because you is a is a cherished moment when you have a happiness and, and satisfying to working with the team, you don't bother about how much the, the company will pay you. You feel healthy. Then you're increasing your value. You you open up your heart and ask people how to, for example, how to make a dealing with uh, with the authorities to do submission. Then you know the checklist, you know everything, you got experience, you, that's a value for you. So that when you go on to move on to other episode, when the other company asks you, can you do a submission? You say, yes, I have an experience. That's the value. That's the value. Not only about design, not only about working drawings, not only about how to conduct on site, but for me, for me, yeah, those, all this value you can foresee, but the value how to deal with people actually. Value how to deal with people is not easy to define that. It's an amazing journey, how to value dealing with people. So all this journey, number one, you need to find your, I was so so grateful when I moved to KL. I met Ajin Azlan, he's one of the director in Rekabena in PJ and of Seripa. And in, I, 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 off, I offered working with him. I think about maybe 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. Quite some time we have us we'll have us so many interesting memories with Ajin Azlan. Remember that? Ajin Azlan, yeah? So many memories. I learned a lot from him when I didn't know. I asked him, and if I make mistake, he scored me and I said my mistake and I improved to him that whoa, I done my mistake. Let's so make sure I don't make the same mistake. So improving each other so to create a value. So for for you, you ask the question is this. Do not go for, you know, when you start to work, it's not about glamorous. No way. It's not about to define, oh, I, I'm, I'm my office in KLCC. No, it's not about the venue. It's not about the brand of the company that you want to work with. I think, no, that doesn't matter the brand or what, but as long as you can suitable to yourself. Because I don't want to hear the young graduates, for example, it's only example, which means it's true story, but it's only example for you to hear. Oh, she or she wanted to work with this company because the company is a brand company. Okay, fine. But end up for five years, she and he been working under the staircase doing a toilet detail. Only. You don't have a chance to explore a lot of things just because a glamorous firm that you want to with so that you can go out to meet your friends and say, hey, where are you working? I'm working with this company. Walla way. Wow, so glamour are you. But he and she, keeping his value inside, don't want to have an initiative to open up, to observe, to experience more than that, rather than just doing, working, rowing toilet details for five years, even though they have higher salary, but stagnant. Don't do that. This is my opinion. I don't scold you. It's only my opinion. For me, the value is not because of the salary you have. Opportunity. The opportunity by given by, by your mentor, by your boss, giving you opportunity. You explore and explore and you learn a mixed failures. And you learn from the failure. You go forward. You go forward until one day you never know that you have a value until the people see their value, then it can be justified. I mean, this is my advice to all the young graduates. No matter what. You can go any type of firm, big firm, medium-sized firm, or small firm. It's, it's okay. You explore, but go and find an opportunity. Go and find opportunity so that you can increase and observe and exploring the value. I mean, that's my advice, architect Chan, to, to your student. Yeah?
Thank you so much, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it is 12.30 now, so 30 minutes past the original time. So, but I just want to have one, I mean, I just want to let the floors, you know, should the student have one more questions, you can still accommodate that. You know, you feel like you don't ask that question and you can't sleep tonight, this is the time, okay, okay. But anyway, really, really grateful for, for all the experience sharings. Uh, it is, I think it's uh, just, not just wonderful for the student, it's wonderful for all of us too. And um, to, to really see things, uh, gaining new insight and gaining new knowledge from both of you. I'm sure the student, they are gaining, he, they are gaining something from all of you and they might need a bit of time to digest it. But uh, I believe that, uh, you know, architect Adranda, architect Naslan, they are, they are always willing to share, you know, whenever there is there is um, opportunity and and chances, maybe we can invite them again for a series two or three um, for the continuous. Yeah. So um, before we end the section, okay, I, I think yeah, the student has no more question. Maybe we would like to have a group photo. Uh, student, if you do not mind, you could uh, turn on your camera. Turn on your camera. Yep. So the eager young mind of architects tomorrow. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> Baru boleh nampak muka. Yeah, at least now you can see their faces. Yeah. Yeah, the future architects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Ramai itu satu lebih. Yeah, hundred and twenty. Uh, we have today, and I think we have a uh, lecturers also from UT. Ah, right, 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 right. Uh, yes. Uh, so hi. Hey, good luck to you guys, lah. Yeah. I mean, for your career, you know. Uh, I hope you all do well. All of you are sitting for your part three. I hope you pass first time. That kind of thing, you know. And then do look us up, uh, architect Adrenta. If you need any tips for part three, he's the expert, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yes, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not the expert. I'm just, <laughs> just helping, helping. I'm not the yeah, expert. Yeah. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying that you know, all of you, all of you are unique. All of you have potential. Yeah. And uh, we wish all the best for you, lah. Yeah. Inshallah. So Thank good you luck so and, much. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see some lectures as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have lecturer joining. Yeah. We have a total of close to 120. Yeah, we are right. yeah. Mostly from U UTM, is it? Um, Most, yeah, I mostly from UTM. Sure, yeah. yeah. We also have from other universities here, from UTHM. Okay, like yeah. okay. also joining in. Right. Yeah. right. And also and, and international students also joining in. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, I, I, I think I speak for Architect Adranta as well. We really hope that um, uh, what we have shared with you guys have been beneficial. And uh, hopefully, you know, what we shared is you, you can take from, from them, you know, if not literally, but principally as well, you know, yeah, take the gist of the message and then do apply it into your daily lives, you see, not just your career, apply it in your daily life. And uh, inshallah, you'll go far, inshallah. UTM is really good. I mean, they've done really good work. So you guys are in the right place, you see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, students, uh, yeah, please switch on to camera rolls. There are two camera shy on the same. Okay, I will put the group of them out. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there are many, many pictures. Wait. Uh, okay. There are many, many rooms, Architect Chan. I think you need to go to the next room, to the next room, yeah. to the next room. <laughs> yeah, okay, the next one. The next one. Okay. Yeah, sometimes you have to keep smiling and smiling helps you to, to, stay, to stay motivated and to stay positive. Okay, the third page. 
but uh, the student begins to um, switch on the camera starting from the page. Maybe we will take the first and the second page. Is that okay? Okay. Good. Okay. So, okay. The last five you need to be is anything from Akita and Brandas or Akita Nasilan that you would like to, you know, uh, the last few words. We will appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, uh, thanks for this opportunity again. I, I I really like to sign off with you know um, a, a vote of thanks to to UTM for organizing such a such a wonderful forum, uh, and I think a very very appropriate and timely forum as well. Um, you know, it's for the goodness of our youngsters who are leaders of tomorrow, architects of the future. You know, you you guys have got a big role to play, so don't let us down. Don't let the country down easy. You know, don't let yourself down. You know, you got so much potential. Uh, realize it now, yeah. Realize it with passion, <laughs> as Sadhguru does says. You know, yeah. <laughs> Inshallah. Okay. Thank you so much, Prof. Alice and um, and Architect Chan and all the lecturers there. You know, I I I'm sorry. I I I don't. You know, I don't really. I've not been familiarized with your names. I see um, our our professors and doctors and you know very learned persons. Um, you know you're doing you're doing really f fine work here fantastic yeah amazing thank you, thank you. And lastly of course last but not least i thank adrianta he's been he's been such an inspiration to um to this to the youngsters and um you know and uh, uh of course as a former employer we are really proud to have him you know associated with us uh in rika banner and uh, he's one of our product uh amongst many many others as well i'm, I'm sure uh, our colleagues uh, have, have looked at, at, his, at his career path, you know, with some uh, with with some measure of uh, wanting to learn and, and uh, wanting to follow as well. So keep up the good work, and and uh, you know we wish you well as well. Kem uh, salam pada everybody at home. Yeah, and uh, your 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 uh, your young man is it? How old is your young man? Yeah? <laughs> 15, 15 years old. <laughs> 15, mashallah, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen him for so long, you know. Kim Salam Yong lah, eh, Adrenalina. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Architect Adrenda. Well, uh, Architect Chan, Dr. Ellis, uh, thank you so much again for this special opportunity. I, I can declare this is a special talk that I've been given. I think people told me that I've been for more than 1,000 hours talk. I do believe it, but there's a follower of me saying that I have spent more than 1,000 hours. So, but it's okay. But today is special because when I saw the poster, that was shocked. I said, wow, you invite my former boss, my mentor. <laughs> it will be great. And then I'm so honored to serve UTM with my, my mentor and then to all the students. Uh, I should share my poems that I posted in my Instagram recently. Now. The poems talking about remember your day. Okay, good days give happiness. Bad days give experience. The worst days give lesson. Best days give memories. The past days will inspire you. The future days will build you. But today will be your day. So I wish you all the best. Today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, we're really honored to have Architect Maslam and Architect Janda with us. Uh, thank you for the inspiring uh, talks to students. I'm sure they did learn a lot, if it does not. But, yep. And, uh, yep, when, uh, you know, when face to face is possible, to come, you come to UTM and visit us. Um, we always want to bring you for a coffee or lunch after the talks by right, but we couldn't do it now. Okay. But, yep. Yeah, you can understand us, okay? Again, thank you everyone to all the uh, students and our audience for spending time with us. And um, please fill up the attendance confirmation if you haven't. And the instruct you can be sent once uh, when you have, when I have received the complete list. Okay, again, thank you everyone. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, thank you. We, yeah. We don't mind Architect Muslim or Architect Andrada want to stay back here. And have a bit of uh, reunion here. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, okay, I think uh, I'll leave it to you guys, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. And um, Akita Adrianta. We'll have another session, the following up session soon, inshallah. Okay, we'll do, we'll do. And okay. I see Akita Samsia also here. Yes, yes. Samsia, yes. hi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care Good all. Time. Stay safe. Have a good day. Yes. Okay. Today is your day. Okay. <laughs> yes. 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 Your day. yes. Okay. Bye. Take care all. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.